This is the Open Mat Podcast, and we are on episode four with our very special guest. How's it going? My name is Devin. I'm training at 10th Planet Palm Beach. They know me as Daddy Long Legs, unfortunately. <laughs> I didn't ask for that nickname. that It was given to me, so I got a ride with it. But um, yeah, it's first time. Welcome. P- appreciate you having me, guys. Of course. Awesome. Let me get the nerves out of the way. Just break that down. <laughs> But yeah, I appreciate you having me, man. Absolutely. Also, Daddy Long Legs, when I heard that, the first time I heard that, I was like, who are they talking about? And then you wrapped me up in Rubber Guard, and I was like, okay, that makes, it a, makes lot a lot more sense. It makes a lot of sense. But. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, I, cause, so when I started, it was like, I don't know a lot, and I don't think, I think we were started around the same time, didn't we? Yeah, I started like July last year. I want to say Ju- July, maybe August of last year. Yeah, so I was I was like, okay, like let me roll with this guy. And I think you attached a rubber guard pretty quickly. And yeah. When you threw me in like my first rubber guard thing, I was like, I don't know what to do, but I'm stronger than this. <laughs> so guy. I could break out. <laughs> yeah. That's the hardest thing so far that I've noticed, like especially at um the dojo with mm-hmm. all the bigger dudes. If I don't lock in mission control or lock in New York quick enough, you guys could posture out. Yeah. Boom, easy, yeah. done. Yeah. Then I got to figure out a different avenue. But against your own weight, yeah, that's it gets working pretty well for you because I feel like the 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 fact that you're training with bigger dudes probably helps a lot. Yeah, facts, honestly, because rolling with you guys, obviously you guys have 20, 30 pounds on me, so that, plus you guys are strong, so then when I go against a 170 pounder, 180 pounder, it's not as difficult. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, no, rubber guard was, um, I got introduced to that. I don't know if you went to the Boogeyman seminar. Yes, I did. Yeah, the Boogeyman seminar, one. that was my first seminar. And Dude, so cool. Just me and him are like, the same size, same posture, pretty much. Six mm-hmm. tall, lengthy guys, and I just gravitated towards it because he made it look effortless. Yeah. And when he yeah. wins, it's like, get to it, boom, 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 <laughs> done. Thirty <laughs> seconds. Super easy. Yeah. Um, and he he just like it's cool when you start thinking about it as like a world cl- class break dancer before he yeah. even. Yeah. That's how he started, and, and like, it's like what? <laughs> him and his brother, these world class break dancers, doing ungodly movements body <laughs> movements to themselves so yeah i just gravitated towards it not be, pretty much for because i did sports too back in the day so i felt like i was athletic enough mm-hmm. and flexible enough to get into that that position getting into mission control getting into new york double bag doing all that good stuff do you find as you build upon your rubber guard game or upon your game in general do you find that it's like less flexibility or more than you thought um on the bigger guys, it's more flexibility, a lot more flexibility. Getting, But getting into, I guess, that side off your hip to getting into rubber guard, it's a lot easier against the bigger dudes. But the smaller dudes, um, I don't know. I just feel like I'm longer than them. So it's, yeah. not, it's like, I don't want to say it's effortless, but it's like effortless to get my leg up into. Well, I was going to say, it's probably like a big part of it is, is hip mobility. I yeah. see it's massive when it comes to a rubber guard. Mm-hmm. Um. I feel like your knee doesn't need to be as mobile as your hip. No. Because against bigger guys, it's like, I can't even, I can't wrap rubber guard against bigger guys. Yeah. Um, but I can get fucking, like, uh, London. Easy. Yeah. Right? That's my favorite one to do. That's what I try to get all the time. And the last time I tried to get it on you, it's okay, it's my neighbor. Last time I tried to... Uh, to hit it on you, you looked at me and you said, what are you doing? <laughs> Dude, because you come up with these some crazy tactics sometimes. They come up out of nowhere and it's like, all right, what bag did you pull this out of? Cause <laughs> yeah. I'm so used to you attacking feet or getting into like mother's milk and yeah. working from there. Which, Which by, by the way, way is two totally separate ends of the yeah, body. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you jump into, into London and it's like, why am I stuck here right now? Kai, you don't do this. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's great. It's great. I love different uh, varieties of jiu-jitsu, seeing yeah. different things. And then uh, you're going to get even more excited because Coach taught me a reverse X into a takedown. Okay. Um, into a uh, heel hook. 
You'll be passing that on then. Because I'll have to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. More heel hooks now, Jesus. Yeah. It's I just another, another thing in the back. back. Yeah, no. Uh, that's the that's the biggest thing, man. It's just finding new tricks to do. Mm-hmm. Like finding different oper- uh, windows, different tactics to try to get through to somebody. Mm-hmm. Like I've been playing a lot of like buggy chokes. Like, oh, yeah. I practice a lot I of buggy chokes. when you hit a buggy choke, choke on me, I yeah. was like, what the Like hell? where is this coming from? <laughs> Dude, yeah. a lot of buggy chokes, a lot of fly traps, just... Because of that Renee's, uh, I don't know if you were there. But yes, I was. You were. The Renee Sousa seminar? Mm-hmm. Same thing, dude. Just another tall, lengthy person just doing these unordinary buggy chokes like that. <laughs> like, all right, let's try it in practice. I'm so afraid. Like, a, almost a, because I don't like side mount to begin with. Because to me, it's a transfer position. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to sit inside. I yeah. don't know a lot of people who do. I do know people who will go from top mount into like top side crucifix, mm-hmm. just kind of side mount, but just regular side mount to me is like you're asking to get like to get thrown in the dark, yeah, or to get like buggy chokes, yeah, buggy chokes. <laughs> Sneaky so buggy now, choke. now that everybody in the dojo knows like what a buggy choke is or like how to pull it off, it makes me a little more hesitant. I would say, yeah. to, like, jump into side control. And sit there. Like, yeah. you got to have yeah. a plan, yeah. like, backed up. Because if you wait there a second too long and you're done. <laughs> now I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to go straight from mount north south or straight from north south to mount. Yeah. I just skip side control now, which is not right, but it, you know. And you have to do something, though. You have to. Because you can't wait. Right? You but can't sit You're north south, dude. Sucks. Bro, <laughs> really? Sucks. I'm happy to hear you say that. Just sucks, dude. Being down there, it's like, all right, find a frame. Get 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 some type of frame, dude. Because having that weight dropped on you, yeah, sucks. But it's great, dude. Like I, I appreciate everyone in the dojo, from the biggest dude in the dojo to the smallest dude in the dojo. Cause yeah. Because they, they all have something to give. Yeah, even you know? like because I I'm always hesitant about rolling with people who are smaller than me. Yeah. Because it can build bad habits, but mm-hmm. um, I try I I like. You know, I use different things. So, like, if I roll with Wayne yeah. and I use technique, he still catches me in a guillotine. Wayne gets crazy. And I'm like, how, like, I was in guard. Yeah. <laughs> like, how did this happen? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Wayne's, Wayne's jujitsu. He's very tight. So, it's like you have to be fundamentally, like, sound with him. You have yeah. to break him down somehow. Because getting through his guard is, he's, he's tiny, but he keeps his guard, like, <laughs> yeah. fuck nice and tight eduardo i've just accepted i'm never passing his guard eduardo's a yeah eduardo, i'm just gonna heal up now like, eduardo needs over. to compete man i heard he's competing may may compete don't may don't quote compete. me on it yeah you know? but i heard he's may compete at naga so that'll be cool speaking of competition are you competing at naga at naga or the in-house i will be competing at the in-house yeah for sure so we'll see based on how i do at the in-house then we'll jump it into if I'm going to do Naga. It's exciting. What about your first in-house? Let's talk a little bit about that. Oof. I want to, well, I want to hear your perspective on it because I haven't really talked to you about it. Um, so run us through the whole, the whole, like what, like tell the so audience how it went and then. I went 0-2 on the day, unfortunately. Uh, I won't lie, you know, numbers. Just first comp. Yeah, first comp. Nerves definitely got the best of me. Moving. Everything's so fast paced. I've never understood that in comp. Everything's moving a million miles a minute. So I jumped into, I don't remember who I was playing or who I was versing, but um, he was from Boca and jumped into guard, got him into guard, got him into the dead orchard sequence and Mm. then um, just didn't lock it tight enough and he broke out, boom, boom. And then he ended up winning the match by a triangle. And um, same thing in the second match, tried to pull guard and didn't go my way because just didn't go my way you know mm-hmm. had to slow down and pace myself and you know just adjust myself you know get into a yeah. better headspace not move so quick but yeah. it happens first match we move past it second in-house will be a different story yes sir i so, like the attitude yeah so second match went the same way ended up getting my back taken and i think i lost by rnc by like two minutes three minutes in Mm-hmm. But both very good learning experiences. I'm not doubting, you know, the people I versed. They definitely <laughs> did what they had to do to win. Good opponents. But um, definitely a very humbling learning experience. I tell everybody this, and I think I've said this on a podcast before too, I would almost amount your first competition to luck. Because yeah. it's like you, 
you, you could, could be, be like trained at the level of a blue belt mm. and not step on the, the stage for a competition and then the first time you go it's just like it's a dump yeah you're like here's all my adrenaline go I'm gonna d- d- just go yeah. you know what I mean I could agree with that yeah for sure so, so it's not like, like I, I try not to make it like the end of the world when it feels like an L but mm-hmm. it's really like I mean, you held a kid in a dead orchard for a long ass. Yeah, it was. It was. Good. It was almost <laughs> tight. Yeah, I definitely did what I had to do to get there. But yeah, I, well, it was almost. And you were choking the crap yeah, hell out of but, him, weren't you? Yeah, no, I had his arm like <laughs> extended. But hey, shout out to him. He didn't tap. It is what it yeah, is. Yeah, he's real for that. For sure, he didn't tap. He definitely gave me an eye opener. Like. Next time you got to break an arm, you yeah. got to take an arm back home yeah. with you. Cause you think it's like Coach just saying that, right? But when it's actually in the heat of the moment <laughs> and you got to do it, yeah. you kind of got to do it because yeah. they don't tap and they're not going to tap. If oh. they're, you know? Yeah. Like if, if you're not, some people just have that mentality. Like, you got to kill me. You know, this guy right here. <laughs> this guy right here. Well, it's, it's, it's for me, I would say. It's, it's not, not that, that I feel like, like especially, especially in training, I've got, got I feel like I got a lot better because I used to be like, like no, no fucking way anybody in this room is gonna tap me. Yeah, because right? that was just my mentality. But now you know that makes a bad training partner, and that also makes your jujitsu worse. Yeah. Um. So, like, I think you got to be more aggressive up in practice. You know. I do. I feel I, like you, if it's not a bigger dude, you kind of just let them work, and then. You yes. do what you have to do at the end. Yes. But you'll let them work the first four minutes. And because then that's what coach told me to do. Really? Well, because, because I'm really strong. Yeah. Combined with, like, I, I got, got a good brain. <laughs> so yeah. it's, he said, if it's too easy for you, wait till the last minute or 30 seconds of a round and then go for a submission. Do what you have to do. Yeah. So the whole time I'm, when I'm rolling with people who are like, I know I can win work I them um mm-hmm. i try to let them work yeah. or i work and try to like see how many submissions i can get within that six minute interval mm-hmm. um so there is sometimes where i get like like there's i'm man i'm finally like there's finally people in the room who are bigger than me yeah and more athletic than me it's so frustrating it's great I know. It's, it's great. It's frustrating for me. It's hard, yeah. honestly. Like, the bigger athletic dudes, like Armani, just yeah. off the instance, God dude. Damn. The kid's a tank. He's, <laughs> he is. what's he, 230, but he moves like. Yeah, he's, 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 quick. he's shifty, yeah. And it's like, yeah. you don't see that out of a big man. I want him to. I'm excited to get him on here after he competes. Yeah. Because I want to see how he does against somebody his weight mm-hmm. um, who's like his same level. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because. All day, like, he fucking runs through me, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but 20, 30 pounds is a big difference. Um, yeah. What are you weighing now? 200 pounds. Good for you, bro. Yeah, man. Good for well, you. The loss is going well. I think he's weighing about 220, 230, something like that. Yeah, he wants, he's trying to cut, too. Um, for, not for, he's not cutting super hard, but I know he wants to weigh less. Yeah. So he's doing his best to do that. Um, yeah, but That was your first in-house, too, though. Last, uh, our first tournament, no? Mm-mm. When did you compete before? Uh, the first in-house ever. The first in-house ever? Yeah. I've competed at two in-houses and one nice. main stage. How'd you do it the first one? I went two and zero. Dude, nice. Well, okay, so technically... Sorry to, like, jump off topic, no, that's dude, okay. but I was thinking about it. Technically, I've lost to, to blue belts. Yeah. 100%. But... Of, but in my own belt, in my own weight class, I've only lost once, and that was a main stage. Nice. Against the uh, that one kid, I was just fucking exhausted. I think I would have done better. Was that the in-house? No, that was the uh, main stage. Finishers. finishers. Yeah. Yeah. I was just tired. That's all it was. But um, plus, it's hard. That's a big dude. I don't. Th- he was he two oh five looking. <laughs> that I don't know. He was he, like six foot six. He may have <laughs> cut some weight for, to make two oh five, but dude, that was a tall dude. He's like 6'5", 6'6", 205. We don't have that at the gym, you know? <laughs> we don't have something to compare to that at yeah. the gym. So. I mean, we do now with Armani, I guess. But um, Yeah, but this guy, I don't know. He was a guard player, right? Uh, he was good on the bottom? He, I don't think I ever got him in the bottom. He was just like, I mean, I just like lost seconds. Yeah. Kind of. So like he, 
it went from like the second I locked up with him, the distance he kept mm-hmm. between myself and him made me feel like his stand up was really good. So I got like scared. Okay. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna, you know, do whatever I need to yeah. do. And I don't even remember how he took me down. I was so tired. It was like my brain was thinking a second behind. No, for sure. Like it was. Well, it's because I got off a twelve hour night shift the night before. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, now I just have to pull him all day or. And fuck yeah, and then, you were there from what nine well, That's what I was like. I thought we were gonna roll, and it was gonna be like three hours. Yeah, you know? nine a.m. Like, and match. you had the second to last match or something like that. Yeah, Third exactly, to last match. Exactly. We were there for four hours, five hours, just exactly on just, repeat. Yeah, just gassing. But no, it was another great learning experience. That tournament was pretty cool, though. It was cool to see um, the differences of styles. Too, yeah, because I didn't realize how drastic it was. Like every tenth planet guy would drop against a Gracie guy and mm. go for a heel hook. Yep. Every Gracie guy was doing triangles, arm bars. The traditional yeah, the right? traditional stuff. It's very it's very cool to see the But difference. even Tenth Planet styles within themselves. Everybody has a different <laughs> style. Yeah. Every single body. From Armani to Wayne to Coach to me to Boogie to yeah. Renee. Everyone has a different style. Yeah, it's so cool, man. It's great though how everything just folds and molds together you know <laughs> especially when you're in the dojo and then you get like the click moment like yeah. something something fit you figure something out and you're like oh finally i can incorporate that into my game yeah that's what i really love the most is like finding a new move to do, um it's hit, like or comes finding... from the heavens and you're yeah. like holding it and you're like and then when you hit it yeah <laughs> you're like i'll take it you i know? have still to this day never finished somebody from london no and the only reason for that is because I'm too slow on it. I don't play London a lot. I uh, like it because I have the flexibility to do it. Yeah. I can throw my leg out of it. And on the bigger man, it's hard. Like you said, it's hard to get your leg around. Yeah, yeah. So getting London, also, getting that. big guys like Armani will just pick you up. Uh, it happened on Friday. Yeah, it's I annoying. That it's a, not, not he is annoying, but that's yeah. annoying. You know what I mean? Cause, like you're weightless. Yeah. It's like just you're like, paperweight. Yeah, oh, cool. I got him in the guard. And then it, or I got him in wherever I want. And then they just drive through you. And you're like, the fuck yeah you know? i got him in a triangle position and the next thing no my back's off the ground <laughs> and i'm looking up at the sky like I, I don't know what to do yeah. i don't know what to do here yeah. so i let go of the triangle exactly just kept moving but yeah no especially against the big guys it's it crazy. should be reassuring to you though to know that like if you be if you catch somebody in a triangle who's bigger and they pick you up like that you know that a smaller guy can't really do that I hope so. Oh my god! <laughs> I hope so. Or a guy in your weight. Class. But Armani made me feel like, like a paperweight, and it all the time I go against Armani, he'll say the same thing. It's like if I'm in top side control on him, if I'm in full mount on him, if I have a triangle on him, paperweight just <laughs> get off he, of me. I dude, I hate that he can just because he does it to me too. He just well, he says he does it to you all the time. Yeah. Um, is when you have him and. You're like you. You specifically are mounted on. Yeah. He says he'll just sit up. Out yeah. Of mount. And <laughs> fl- throws me, Kai. I promise you. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know what to do here. Then do I just attack the foot? I know mean, you have to. Yeah. That's that's the only way I've submitted him. Is Attacking with the foot. Feet. Yeah. Well, I think he's very careful with feet too, which is yeah. super exactly what you're supposed to do. He's really technical for two months. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. He well, is. he's a white belt. For sure. He's uh he got his I think he's like one of the earliest white belts coaches coached him. The fastest. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the fastest. Well, he's belt. coach also said he's like kind of been doing jujitsu. Yeah, he has for, a friend, I guess. He has three friends. Cool. He has a black belt, a brown belt, and a purple belt from three different schools. So <laughs> when the opportunity presents itself, you know He doesn't I don't think he realizes that he's been doing jujitsu. Yeah. But he absolutely has been. It's always been near him or and around him. Yeah. That's fortunate though. Yeah, Especially to be two months in, and it's like you've had all that experience already with you. Mm-hmm. It's like sandbagging almost, kind of. You know? <laughs> calling him a sandbagger. No, I'm not it's calling so him a sandbagger, funny. but it's like I know. you have all that advantage with you. Uh, and shout out to him because, you know. He's good. Yeah, he's good, yeah. especially for two months. He's great. Yeah. And run that white belt until coach gives you the blue belt, yeah. you know? Win your tournaments. But I'm Clear not belt. I'm not calling it sandbagging in, in any way, shape, or form. But it's no. like when you have that experience with you prior to you even getting into a dojo, it's the sky's the limit at that point, mm-hmm. you know? Because you can always train with that brown, blue, or black belt. Or brown, purple, and black belt. Yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah. yeah good for him. Yeah. Um, good for him. Interesting enough, though, uh, 
we are I'm excited to talk a little bit about you because mm-hmm. I don't know a lot about you. So let's get a little uh, from from baby to to now. Hmm. Let's get the life story, man. The life story is actually yep. pretty simple. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a very big life story. So, I have a twin brother. Okay. What? We don't look alike though. This is news to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, no, we don't look alike. So, um, we're fraternal. He doesn't have a jujitsu uh, interest or passion or any okay. type of fighting passion. Okay. Which is fine. Neither did I though. I didn't have this jujitsu passion until um, Jake took me to the class. Cyclops, not Jake Strauss. Yeah. Shout out to Jake Strauss. So. <laughs> He's cool. But yeah, no, Cyclops, my cousin. Um, he got me introduced to that. So. Well, you guys are related. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I grew up with him from two years old and onward. Um, so where does it start? Grew up here, West Palm Beach, Florida. Born and raised from here until now. Really? Yeah, I'm a Florida native. Um, Dang. Went to Green Acres Elementary, L.C. Swain, Palm Beach Lakes, John I, Palm Beach State. And now I'm currently in school for um, sonography. So yeah, I've been born and raised in Florida. I don't plan on being here forever, though. No? No, I'm going to leave probably in the next two or three years. I think it's important to be well-traveled. Expand the horizons? Mm Mm-hmm. Where are you from originally? Are you from here? Yep. Born and raised? Yep. But then you lived out in... So I lived lived here, and then I moved to, um, I guess, yeah, so I went here, South Carolina. That was um, for basics? Yeah. And then I went back up to, or I went uh, to California. And then I went to Japan, back Damn. to Cali, back to Japan, back to Cali, back to Florida. Were you on duty in Japan or just? Mm-hmm. Wow. How was that? Beautiful. In I Japan? Would, if I could live in Japan, I would. Is that the goal? That is my, I, told, I tell people, you can. Where do you see yourself retiring? <laughs> if you... uh, if I always tell people I would be on the beach. With a okay. beautiful Japanese woman. That's it. And a margarita. You can't beat it. And a cigar. Dude, that sounds like a lot. That's all I want. Good for I'm you. I'm a superman. I, you gotta be a one bedroom, one bath, bro. I hear so many great things about Japan. Like it's just beautiful. cleanliness, the people, just the culture, I guess you could say. Up and down, dude. I hear Japan's beautiful. I, I think one of the biggest impacts that Japan had on me was you don't realize that air has a smell until you go to Japan and come back. So it smells different here? It smells worse. It smells like trash everywhere in the United States. Really? Yes. Huh. Everywhere that I've been. I've been to Ohio and Cleveland. Japan, though, were you, did they force you to go there, or was it like an option? Oh, no, it was a force. It was like, you have to, this is your deployment, but... Um, were you in Tokyo, or...? No, 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 no. Um, I was in Okinawa, and then okay. I went to, so my first deployment was actually really cool. So it was something called Advon, which is where you go, like with a small group of guys yeah. uh, to Japan before everybody else comes in to like set it up. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would, I was selected for that and then I went over there and then I was Advon again to a different base in okay. there. That Still in Japan though? Yeah, okay. yeah. And so they sent us to Fuji. It was me and one other dude. Hmm. <laughs> for like Can't beat that. two and a half months. Can't be- That's it. That's it. Well, no, that, wow. that was it for that. Hmm. That was it for the for the advon portion, because yeah, um, but two and a half months, you and just another soldier in in Fuji. Yeah. No, no, uh, and then soul, no, 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 nobody with anything on their collar. Yeah, I don't know what they're calling. Them, I though. mean, technically, like, like there were guys on the base that high ranking officials. None of them, yeah. like giving you an earful. Like the the biggest, the highest ranking guy on the base was a warrant officer, and anybody in the audience that knows anything about warrant officers is they're chill as hell. Okay. Um, and they're like one in a million. There's like not, there's like a thousand of them, you know? Yeah. It's probably an exaggeration, but. So he's just very laid back. Yeah. So you kind of have he, free range to do whatever I'm you want. I'm not going to name names, <laughs> but we got, look, I'll give a little story time. I got you. Let's go. <laughs> okay. We were, you're going to love this. We were at the ramp. This is towards the, kind of like the end of our Advon time mm-hmm. when the company was going to start coming in. Yeah. To the, to the base for their little. Uh, time there because we were there for like three months prior when mm-hmm. they were over on the other base and then they would come over to do their little training exercises for like three months and then we'd all go back together yeah so me and this other guy 
the guy who came with me, he was a higher rank than I, and then this warrant officer were just like sitting on the top of the lab trying to fu- fucking like fix it. They're all broken. Yeah. Dude, like every one of them is <laughs> fucked up beyond belief. Like the guys before us didn't take care of it. No, Clearly yeah. nobody's touched the vehicles in like Jesus. two and a yeah. half years and they're massive diesel engines, right? And it's Yikes. not like we brought a goddamn mechanic with us. Yeah. So. It was just you guys <laughs> yeah. trying to figure it out. Yeah, so Dang. we're like hitting shit with a wrench. Um, <laughs> and we're working super late on the ramp. Yeah. And the warrant officer it just comes up to it. First off, my first day there, uh, I was doing like some turret checks, which is like I'm looking at the sights, making sure everything's good. And the dude pops out and it like looks at me from the t- this guy's like 36 like looks over and goes what are you doing in there marine and i like look up at him and i'm like raw sir he's like don't ever call me sir and he shoots me he shoots me with an airsoft gun what <laughs> <laughs> first day first day <laughs> and i'm like it's a way to set what? it off i'm like what <laughs> where wow. am i you know but anyway <laughs> but anyway, we're we're back in the the awesome. the moment of working on the LEDs. So we're it's super late. It's got to be like nine or ten, eleven yeah. maybe, and we're just fucking getting nothing done. But we're trying. Hey, we're fucking trying. Like this dude, I hear his I hear his truck pull up because he's got like one of those dinky Japanese yeah. car like trucks. Yeah, yeah, they're cool though. <laughs> uh, but he pulls up, um, and we see him get out, and we're just like. Here, whatever. Yeah. You know, he's gonna come yell at us or something. Um, he pulls up with two thirty racks. What's up? Thirty racks of beer. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. He puts them on the other. He's like, "All right, what are you working on, boys?" And I'm like, "What is happening?" It's like a party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. We start getting so fucked up. We're getting plastered. I am not naming names. Yeah, it is what it but is. But we're getting shitty yeah. on top of this LAV. Awesome. Uh, and then my the guy gets so drunk, not the officer, the guy I'm with, yeah. passes out on the top of the vehicle. And <laughs> <laughs> we're walking around, and we have this, like, hatred for, like, it's kind of like a brotherly hatred yeah. with another, th- uh, like, vehicle company called Trax. Okay. All right, they're just, like, they're troop carriers. Okay. Um, so we wake them up, and we're like, like it's fuck shit time. It's like two in the morning. So is this still like, your first day? No. Oh, no, okay. No, this no. is. I was this gonna like say, dude. The this is a wild first <laughs> no, day. No, okay. a lot of cool shit yeah. happened there though. Um, so we're like walking and we're walking around the ramp because we woke the other guy up. He's like, and the warrant officer goes, "Let's go check my hog traps." And I'm like, "What?" what? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, there's hogs on this base." So like. I got consent from the Japanese government to like set traps to kill them, kill hogs, attack people. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> so Dude, that's awesome. I'm like, okay, let's go fucking do it. We're walking on the way, and he goes, and we're all like blasted, yeah, yeah. drunk. And he looks at me, and he goes, "Piss on that track," and I'm like, "What?" <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm like, "Sir, I don't think that's." And then then the guy who's higher up than me who's in my company looks at me he goes that's an order from an officer yeah, piss on the track <laughs> okay oh, you say so I, i'm just like pissing on a vehicle and we <laughs> what the heck <laughs> and then we wander around the base yeah. checking the hog traps dude that sounds like <clears throat> did you find any hogs no but oh. pmo the military police did pull up next to us and they look at him and the like this little because it's all like pfcs who get sent out there yeah um this is like a lower rank the, like a lower rank guy gets sent out there to be the on base cop mm-hmm. because nobody ever does anything bad on that base you know so he pulls up like next to us because they just circle the base like hourly or something yeah. he pulls up and he looks at the window and he sees us and he goes well wow, sir and then he puts his head back and he drives away <laughs> yeah that sounds like a fun time it was how long what was the longest period you were out there for uh that when I was have uh, it, it's equal time. It's eight okay. months. Eight months. Six to eight months usually. Okay. We got 
COVIDed the first time, so we had to like do some shitty stuff to get yeah. out there the first time. You were time. out there during COVID? <clears throat> I was, yeah. Wow. I was cycling out there during COVID. So we were um, like That's... stuck in barracks for like two weeks. Were they shut down? Like Japan? Mm. Like, you know how like California and New York shut yeah, down? Was it like that? Yeah, crazy about stuff like that, but by the time we got there, I don't really there was a period of time where we couldn't go off base yeah because of covid but you said that was for two weeks that was like two 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 weeks um so we had to spend two weeks in the barracks Uh before we left two weeks after we got there they did the whole covid test and all that yeah um not a fan hey it you know what that's not the worst thing thing up the nose no 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 i mean I had it like four times in the military. Yeah. COVID? No, the Oh, the no, swab? The, yeah, 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 I've never had COVID. Okay. I'm a very healthy boy. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. I've had it, but had it, quotations. Um, but I didn't have any symptoms. Dude, I was Did they, Yeah, I notice a lot of the times yeah. people who get COVID, I feel like the symptoms only come out with older people too. Yeah, for sure, because <laughs> my brother doctor. was the same way. I'm like, Cyclops was the same way. They said he had COVID. He ended up missing like two or three weeks from work, and he didn't have a symptom. You but paid for it? Paid for it. Shout out to Publix. Um, <laughs> oh, cool. But, yeah, he was out for two, three weeks, and he would take a COVID test like uh, once a week. Like mm-hmm. once a week, boom, seven days go by, take it again, show up positive again, and zero symptoms. What? Nothing. Chilling, hanging out. That's but cool. Publix being, you know, that big organization, they say they you got COVID, yeah. don't come in. Yeah, they can't. They absolutely can't risk that. So yeah, it was paid for. So, but that's sick. definitely with the older people. Did Publix? So here's the part that I, the gap that I kind of missed um, during the Marine Corps mm-hmm. was COVID. Mm-hmm. So what was that like for for you during the COVID times? Because I never, I don't know what the world was like. Honestly, um, here. In Florida, it was not that bad. Really? It didn't shut down, but um, masks were mandated in certain sp- places like banks or hospitals or all that good stuff. But Hospitals make sense. It almost seemed like it was kind of pick and choose where you, where you had to wear a mask. Mm-hmm. Like in California, it was mandatory. You had to wear a mask. You had to have your COVID ID card when yeah. you go eat or something like that. But Florida never got to that extent. To what where were you in California for? I was never in California. Oh, you just knew the rules. But I just know the rules yeah. of California. Um, same thing with New York, too. They needed the COVID vaccine card to go eat at a restaurant with your family and all that crazy stuff. I haven't applied for a job in the last, like, year that hasn't asked me for the COVID vaccine card. Really? Yes. So you had to get the uh, vaccine? Oh, it was mandatory in the military. It was. Very interesting, which is, like, now... It's kind of, that kind of got swept under the rug. I'm not going to lie. Like nobody's really concerned about it. I'll tell you why I think that got swept under the rug. Because that's super illegal. Yeah. <laughs> and it's um, crazy because not only the military, a lot of jobs here were doing the same thing. Really? Right? You're out of a job if you don't get this COVID vaccine. Which is, I mean, Florida can do that because it's an at-will state. Yeah. They so f- they can fire you and not tell you why. They forced my brother to get one. Like really? at his job and he had to get one but i didn't have to do that. i wouldn't have gotten it yeah not because i'm like a vaccine denier like yeah. i believe that stuff works but i'm not like i don't i was in the military like which granted is not the greatest living condition but yeah i just what i don't really i didn't feel like i needed it i guess I was a hear me out here we go covid before. covid comes out okay a global pandemic, a lot of people get it. You're telling me you have this foolproof vaccine, the <laughs> end all be all, in less than six months, and I'm just supposed to follow suit with it? It's a pandemic. It's gonna, this is it. This is the cure right here. And it took you five months to get it. But you don't even have a cure for cancer, and it's been. Which is crazy. Hundreds of years. Dude, you're you know? gonna get me started on conspiracy. We can go down that rabbit hole oh, a different oh, time, but you're God. telling me this foolproof COVID vaccine you came out with in five months is supposed to be the end all be all to this vaccine? I don't believe it. Yeah, and then they're like, you gotta get a booster, and I'm like, what? I've yeah. never had to get a booster for anything else ever. And now we're at what, seven boosters? Yeah. People yeah. are jabbing. They have so many different <laughs> needle marks in their arm, dude. They don't even know it's how to like, count. God, just give me. 
TRT at this point. Exactly. Like, <laughs> but no, COVID in Florida wasn't that bad. Jobs did definitely ask for COVID vaccines, but some jobs even mandated it. Mm. But I ended up quitting my job and getting into like blue collar work from um, cleaning, like just doing a whole bunch of nonsense. Like hitting hammers on wood and shit? Uh, I worked on floors for a little while. Damn. Yeah, I did hardwood flooring for a year and a half, like a year, about a year. So we were installing, and then I did like the sanding and finish part. Mm-hmm. So um, pretty much staining wood floors and all that good stuff. Did it in, Tom, I don't know if you know who Tom Ford, the designer is. No clue. Did it in his house in Palm Beach um, probably a couple of years back. And then after that, did a little mold remediation and biohazard remediation. I was telling you like the other day. Yeah, like, Biohazard dude. remediation. Tell me something about we that. We had to, uh, so it was actually in Jupiter, not around here though. But in Jupiter, this 24-year-old couple from what I was told, I don't know the exact details on it, but they're living in a townhouse and biohazard remediation is pretty much clean up of any bio, you know. So I'm not really thinking much into it. And then we go and put these hazmat suits on. I'm like, what the? F- huh? Yeah. What am I about to do right now? Dude, I walk into this guy's house and fucking. Am I allowed to curse? Yes. Okay. What the fuck? (laughs) Just make it sure. I didn't know if we were like PC appealing to one audience. No, no, no. So I walk into this guy's house, dude, and the first thing I see in the lit, I think I have pictures. I'll show you pictures (laughs) after. Yeah. But um, I think I still have pictures I sent to my mom. Um, so yeah, in the in the living room, this guy ended up uh committing suicide Mm -hmm. allegedly i don't know the exact story yeah something seemed off about it but we'll go into another conspiracy theory (laughs) after (laughs) okay okay. but um so yeah police's story he ended up killing himself so all in this wall of the living room was just like brain chunks in the ceiling in the cabinets there was a big blood puddle around the couch and then his nice hqd vape inside the blood like he died with the vape in his hand like no, 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 no. You can keep that one, buddy. He died with a he died with his last puff. But um Yeah, like a six foot blood pattern, dude, and we had to clean it and uh there wasn't really much to it, but it was definitely that was my last week at the job actually. Did and you it, do it did you do only that and then like only that one cleanup and then That was like, the one cleanup. Is? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. Cuz it's such a nasty site, dude. It's yeah. like Some people like like cleaning like that much if you want to get into that crime you know. scene unit and look at the dead bodies and all that but when you're looking at it it's like you paint this picture of kind of what happened you play the scene out in your head exactly yeah because yeah. you like, i don't know you see shotgun pellets in the tv you see shotgun pellets in the in the in the couch and Damn. it's like yeah it was a messy scene oh tell me the conspiracy uh so <laughs> hear me out okay so Everything's, you know, bloody in the room, right? Um, This guy, he ends up killing himself. But it's ironic that in the other side corner of the room, there's this dented in golf club with blood spatter marks in it, completely on the other side of where he killed himself. It's on this side, like in the corner of the room. Like if he killed himself here, the blood, the golf club's over in this side. What? Yeah, dented. Did you like tell the cop? I am not a cop. (laughs) <laughs> okay. That's his but, that's his investigation, okay. you know? I'm not okay. gonna lead anybody down no rabbit holes. You're I'm, like, I'm to, not a snitch. <laughs> no, I'm there to clean the body and go about my business. But he killed himself over here. Bloody golf de- it was a driver too. It wasn't like a no. putt or anything. It was like a nice <laughs> dented in driver in the other side of the room. I'm not saying I know anything about it. I don't know nothing. But conspiracy theory what maybe the hell? so yeah it was it was that i don't know what happened it is what it is <laughs> my hands are clean my hands are clean i cleaned the i cleaned the blood splatter remarks and all that good stuff yeah you thought you were going in there to like clean up shit yeah it's not that's not what it no, was. no 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 they told me a story about and i'm glad we got this um that cleanup because they told me about a cleanup three months prior that some guy killed himself in like a um uh, like a Hilton, Hilton Hotel, and he was there for like three to four days. Mm-hmm. Like nobody knew about him. So oh. the bile and all that sh- sunk into the uh, the mattress. So Ooh. it was just smelling up the whole room. Nah, they did not clean the mattress. Yeah, they took the whole mattress oh, out. Thank they, gut- they gutted the whole room, but <laughs> oh imagine God. four days of like a dead body buildup, that type of scent. That would be really bad. No, it's disgusting. Yeah. Oh my God. That's so crazy. yeah, I did that and then 
now I'm working at a nursing school. How do you like that? Is medical a field that you enjoy? Um, it was never a, a passion of mine. Like I've never woke up and was like, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a nurse. I want to you be were a sonographer. Seeking it? Never went out to seek it. No. Um, always thought I was gonna do something like blue collar or hands on. Mm -hmm. Um, then I realized like if you're not the boss at a blue collar job, you're not getting paid the big bucks. Mm -hmm. You're getting paid like the the pennies. You know. Yeah. Given. Peanuts to an elephant, pretty much. Yeah. The big boss is eating. You're getting the, the remains. So, and it's just a wear on the body, you know? It is. Every yeah. day on your back or on your hands and knees doing any type of flooring work, it just beat up on you. It's one of the reasons I got out of the Marine Corps yeah. so early it's, because it's just, it's so bad. Turmoil on the body. Yeah. Like, you get home, you don't want to do anything. Like Ever. No, Ever. You're gassed. <laughs> you're done. So, I'm fortunate because my brother, who... He was actually working at the nursing school before me, mm -hmm. um, got me the job there. Hell yeah. So I started working there as like a scheduler for um, the nursing students. Okay. So I'm still doing that actually. But they told me about this scholarship opportunity that if you're working at the school for a year, they give you scholarship pretty much. Oh, really? All full expenses paid. Yo. So did my year there, applied, they gave me the scholarship and it's just been smooth sailing from there, man. Mm. So I got a year left before I'm licensed and ready to go into the medical field how's it pay good great the nursing does uh i'm not going to be an rn i'm going to be a no, no, no. Uh, sonographer or echo ultrasound so i'm going to be um, doing ultrasound on the heart but hypothetically speaking i've only been really looking at like california and the west coast because florida doesn't pay that well that surprises me florida actually is probably one of the worst states i think um, just an average net for a sonographer is anywhere between like 60 and 80. Okay, that's not... It's not great. You know, <laughs> it's not, not great. No. <laughs> California, however, because I've been looking at California, like San Diego, because I'd probably end up transferring down or going out there. Yeah. And then probably training at like Boogie's uh, Dojo. <sighs> That'd be cool. That'd that's be cool as hell. the plan or either that or Austin, go train with Ben, Eddie, and them. Mm -hmm. You know, wherever the money's at at the time. Cause, yeah. Um, Hate to say, no, I don't hate to say. That's kind of what I feel like. A lot of the old jujitsu guys don't get either, because the older jujitsu guys lived in a different time. What do you mean? I would say in a different time is like now, if you want to do something mm -hmm. really pat and you're really passionate about it, I kind of feel like you have to have a source of income in order to pursue that. Yeah. Um, I For feel sure. like back in the day when jujitsu was starting out. It was small, mm. so it wasn't like, hey, you have to pay a hundred fifty dollars a month or whatever. Yeah. You know, just as a an example cheaper. for, you know, you know this and that. Yeah. And you could go and you could work like a part time job at Walmart and do just jujitsu. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. um, but now it's like, hope you have a full time job, yeah. and you can maybe make all the jujitsu classes. At, you yeah. Want. No. It's definitely tough with a full time job, but I'm fortunate. I work a nine to five, so it's my God bless you. Yeah, it's I amazing. Wish. I have weekends off, <laughs> Monday through Friday, nine to five, so I could make class Monday through Friday because every class starts at seven or something like that. Yeah, I don't do MMA. I'm not doing no MMA. No, classes. dude. Everybody asks me why. I, Cause I'm why like, don't you do it? Like you have hands on combat training, no? <laughs> yes. Slap some gloves on you, dude. I What's don't want to get hit in the face. I'm the same way as you. I, mean, I, I hate to say it, you're not I'm, hitting me in the face. I'm pretty. I don't want to get punched. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I'm way too pretty to get hit in the face. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And Jake says the same thing, Cyclops. Oh, you should do MMA class on me. No. Because you're, cause you're long. They yeah. want you to do it because no. you're like a long dude. And you're like, no. I'd rather hit Omoplatas, dude. Exactly. I'm sorry. I'd rather hit Gogo <laughs> exactly. and play, play mission control. And also, punching somebody, to be perfectly honest with you, does not feel good. Yeah. Hitting somebody in the face doesn't feel as good as... Subbing them. Yes, as like... Fully controlling another room. Exactly. I, I, dude, I'm sorry. Everyone yeah. can get a lucky punch, dude, but it's to sub someone, you have to get them into that position. Yeah. You know, you yeah. have to get them. Have you ever locked a topside triangle from Mel? Oh my God. It's the greatest control uh, feeling you've ever had. Who got, who had that on me? Eduardo. 
Eduardo had it on me? Eduardo hits him all the time. Eduardo might have had I think you got it on me. I'm oh, not yeah. going to lie to you. I'm like, how the hell did we get in this position? I don't remember. I, I think so. We've I, rolled so many times. Dude. I'll, pretend pe- I'll pretend like I'll rock, like I'll let people throw me off one yeah. way, and then I'll lock the triangle. And swing your leg in? And then I'll swing, yeah. Because mm-hmm. I got the flexibility yeah. for it. And I'll lock that triangle up. It's smooth. Yeah, but it's it's gross because you can hit an arm bar from there, too. Yeah. I always wanted to hit a, a, a fully seated arm bar. I haven't been hitting arm bars at I, all. Well, I don't hit any of the basic things, either, like the you know the starter. Yeah. I, like, I I've finished two or three arm bars ever. Okay. Um, and it was like one of them was on Nick. Yeah. And it was just like super lucky. But a lot of people, like, if you know a single, simple armbar escape, you're getting out. You're getting out. I'm not good at all. And it's not, unless, I mean, shotgun position, I feel like is a lot more dominant. But if you're in, like, a standard armbar position, I don't feel like it's, you could get past easily. Yeah. They could push your legs up and then they take back or, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But if they're in a shotgun position, it's a little different. Yeah, I love shotgun armbars. Yeah. I will always. That lever is just crazy in a shotgun armbar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take their whole arm off. Exactly. But yeah, no, I've been playing a lot of just different crazy tactics like buggies, fly traps, octopus card, like anything working from the bottom. I just I'm better at working from the bottom, I've noticed, than playing at the top. Mm-hmm. And it's you know everyone has their game. So coach's mentality about jujitsu is um, get really really good at one thing. Yeah. And then excel at that one thing, and then once you get to black belt, then you can work on all the other stuff. Mm-hmm. Do you have you share that mentality? Um, to an extent, yeah, I agree. Okay. You should definitely have to master one side before you master both sides. But I don't think you should ever throw away that other side. You know, mm-hmm. I feel like as you're working, hypothetically speaking, let's say you're just working your left side of your of your rubber guard, your left leg. Mm-hmm. You should never not try to work your right leg of your rubber guard until mm-hmm. you get the black belt, because then the disadvantage on that it's going to be immense. So as you're getting better you know start throwing your right leg in every at practice or mm-hmm. on people and drilling but to yeah for the most part for sure i've always i always try to work one side of my rubber guard then more okay. than my other side um how do you feel i love coach to death yeah i don't agree i personally am a crazy ass perfectionist okay who has a lot of violence in his body yeah and to get that out i do jujitsu I want to be, and also Bushido code is a big part of my life. Like, is that why uh, you got into jujitsu? What? To cope. You said you have a lot of violence in your body. Mm-hmm. That's kind of. That's like, why I joined the Marine Corps in the first place. And then through the Marine Corps, they nourished it and kind of channeled it into uh, directing it at where'd directing the, it at like terrorists, I guess. Where'd uh, the violence come from? Is that like growing up? Are you no, just? No, I just am. I've always been like a. I was always an angrier person. Always growing up? Yeah, I don't know. I just, I'm, huh. like, don't worry. I'm like way, I'm way better now. Yeah, I've never um, seen that type of side to you. No, so I you don't being really violent, get angry. You're usually a groovy dude. <laughs> I like, am. You're, I call you the groove, the groovy guy. <laughs> yeah. You know? So you having a violent side just. Um, no, no, it's deep, deep down. But it's like, uh, so I got like, I joined the Marine Corps to like hone that, I guess. Um, and they Did that work? Very good job. I was going to say, I don't <laughs> think that would work. It just like made me angrier at the wrong things mm-hmm. um and so when i started jujitsu and i kept looking for places nobody would take me because i was too aggressive i got kicked off of multiple gracie mats no offense to the school of gracie really you guys are cool yeah but for got, aggressiveness yes were you doing gi at first or no gi or always no gi? always no gi. always no gi there was a program in the marine corps there were some guys who did gi jiu-jitsu but they would let me roll yeah and because i didn't have a gi so i'd roll no gi against that and gi and they'd still kick my ass but they you know how they did, were how did that sorry to interrupt how did that go the first time you got kicked out like what was your initial reaction um and how did he address that to you did he just come up to you and say hey. it was after the class he said we can't have you here because you're too aggressive and we don't want straight up just like yes. that and this happened the same way at the other gracie gyms you went yes. to yes it was similar um, every time, but there was one that was like, I mean, they had a rule where you can't roll till blue belt, and I wasn't interested in that, so I left. Yeah. There was another one that was like, that was like, you need to be nicer to these people. 
Do you think they all had ties with each other, or just? No, 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 not not at all. I think they. I think I was definitely more not aggressive. as controlled as I am. Which is today. understood because everyone who starts jujitsu or knows yeah. jujitsu understands that the no belts are always spazzy. Like yeah, yeah. A million miles a minute. Well, don't. I wasn't spazzy. I just wanted to hurt the person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm You're ready to go. You. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, well, that, it's it's more like that was like competitive anger. That was like, I'm do- not going to lose. You were doing comp classes in a beginner's fundamental class, is yeah. what I'm hearing? <laughs> you went comp rules? I don't know who would do that. That's so silly. Uh, comp but, rules in the beginner's class? Yeah. Well, now now it's like, because when I met Coach, uh, I told him, you know, I'd been kicked out of schools and stuff. Mm-hmm. Because I, now I'm just not going to, I wasn't going to waste my time. Yeah. Uh, and, like, go through a whole class, pay for a class. Yeah. And then just, just be get told kicked out. That, exactly. Yeah, so I told Coach when I got there, I was like, hey, like, I, I they keep kicking me out of schools. Mm-hmm. I can't really find the right place. And then he's like, right, we'll take you. We want to own that. We're going to find a way yeah. to do that. Sick. Do you feel like he's addressed that in the right way? Format. Yeah, I don't feel like it's. I don't feel like you're it needed to be a impressed. violent guy at all. So I feel like it's working. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, it's because I, I also don't. I will never ever roll with the people in comp class. Like I will roll with people in comp. Because You'll I, never roll with the people in comp class like you do in an actual comp. No, you guys get like I would say eighty percent if I crank it up. I could much. see that. Because I, like, want to, like, murder my opponent. You're not throwing, like, cross faces and stuff is what you're saying? Mm, I will still, like, push on your face. Like, because I want, I need people. Like a force, coach calls it a force choke. Now. Yeah. Are you doing force chokes? <laughs> well, we're, no, we're calling it, uh, we're calling it the dog collar choke. I thought that was the other way around. No. What's the <laughs> other way? What's this way? This is, do- that's dog collar. You got it right. But he wants to call the front one a dog collar choke because the force choke still sounds bad. <laughs> I think for shout out to coach. Yes. Shout, shout, shout out to coach. Out to coach. <laughs> um, whatever you know, we'll leave that name to be determined. You know, whatever you want to call it is what you want to call it. Yeah. Um, no, I would say when I say that, I'm talking about more of like, like I will push on people's face. Yeah. And I'll like shove your nose in a mother's milk you or whatever. But I'm not gonna do it like, like to the level. I I tone the aggressiveness down. Mm-hmm. I, I guess, guess it's, it's like, like I'm not trying to hurt you. Yeah. I just need my fellow competitors to know that people will cross face you. This is what it yeah. feels like. Um, and I'm not going to give you the moment to like. Think about it. Yeah. I don't want them. you to be like, oh, okay, this is him cross facing me. I need you to know that people are just going to do yeah. it. So I just do it. Um, I kind of, I don't know how I fell into the role of being the guy who. Mother's milks people. The, the that's your. That, that's what you do. <laughs> I didn't that's do what it. you do. I'm not gonna lie. I put um. I'm not even gonna say names, but it was his first day at the class. Like first day, he moved from. Okay. I don't know where he moved from, dude. And he told. He told me he had this experience. I think you told me he had this experience. <laughs> you're like, roll with this kid. He's experienced. Da 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 da. I you know, know who you're talking about. I'm like, all right, cool. Sounds great. Go go Plata, <laughs> uh, Dead Orchard, <laughs> Triangle, back to back to back, and Coach is like, "Yo, it's his first day," and I'm like, "Huh?" I just well, he, he was, was like, like, he did have experience. I just destroyed a trial class kid. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, Coach. Well, he had experience um, in yeah, another school, allegedly. Oh really? No, I'm just kidding. I don't oh, know. Okay. If he did. I, I think he I did. Know. From what you and Coach said, he, he um, yeah, he's been rolling for a hot. He minute. said he's been been doing it for two years, but yeah, long, we'll go past that, you know. Yeah, it is what it is. Big quotations, poof, up in the air. No, good dude. Like he's, I said, yeah, everyone, no, I, everyone at the dojo is great. I was gonna say, I don't think I've ever met a person in the Ten Planet affiliation that I've been like, I don't like you. That, I feel the same way. General, really, I don't like. I don't get that type anybody. of hate or. Which remorse is, for somebody. You I know. don't know how people have room in their life to do that. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, brother, take a breath. 
Like, it's not that serious. It you know, it's it never isn't. that it serious. Well, well, your school beat my school. Did you? Okay. What does That's that do cool. for you, Elias? Yeah, exactly. Did you lose money out of it? I'm no. Sorry, is this going to change yeah, the like, affiliation of the business forever? It's like some like, built-up hate from nothing. Like, I know. Your coach beat my coach 20 years ago. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> my bad. Calm down there, guys. Yeah, no. <laughs> Chill out. And some people are like, uh, like I think it's super weird. Because I don't know if this is true, but I know that some people talk about like how Gracie schools can be very clicky. Really? You're either in or you're not kind of oh, vibe. Mm. And to me, that's like very strange. Yeah. Because I feel like if you to be a good coach in jujitsu. Do you mean like clicks inside their own dojo? No, no, no. I mean like outsiders can't come in. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And I, I feel like to be a good coach in jujitsu, you have to give your guys outside experience. Yeah. So like. Where, like, how do you draw that line? Like, just, I would want my guys to go. And get as much experience as possible. Yeah, go fight anybody. <laughs> I, I feel the same way, because it's not for nothing. Getting you guys, anybody in the dojo right now, getting them into guard is such a bitch to do. Passing guard. Everyone <laughs> knows I'm tra- trying to play rubber guard at this yes. point. Every single, there's not yes. a person in that dojo who knows I don't play rubber guard. So it's like, getting you guys into full guard. Is already a challenge in itself now because you guys first aren't getting into guard. You guys aren't trying to fall into my guard, you know. <laughs> so trying to get full guard on you guys has just been so, just been a challenge lately. It's frustrating, it's, huh? It's hilarious. But then, hypothetically, I'll go and roll with somebody else outside of the dojo, you know, like from Boca or from A and M, and I'll get full guard easily because mm-hmm. they they don't know what I'm playing. Everyone at the dojo knows what I'm playing, <laughs> you know. So I feel like, like you said, though, I feel like. Getting as much competition in your dojo is, is great. Yeah. It gives you whole different angles, whole different perspectives, you know, on people, on people's styles. But yeah. But Gracie's, yeah. Gracie's seem very traditional and, like you said, clicky. Yeah. yeah. And I don't, I don't like, like, I don't like saying traditional. And the only reason for that is because it's like, what makes it tradition? Is it like the fact that we hate each other? <laughs> yeah. I don't think there should be That's any hate. That's weird, you know? There should not be any hate. Yeah, it's very it's very interesting. Um, are you ready for our closing segment? Let's do the closing segment. Okay, this closing segment is called gift wrap. Gift wrap? Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna let you sit with that because a lot of people. You're not getting me into a gift wrap, are you? No. Okay. And this is my favorite part because you were Cheers. the fourth person to say that, and it's been four episodes in the podcast. <sighs> I'm not. Dude, thank the God. <laughs> <laughs> thank Why God. Why everybody fucking think Coach. Of- Burns gift wrap into your head, dude, Monday through Friday. So when you hear gift wrap, it's you the first. Get a super cool Hawaiian shirt. Oh! Yup. Yup. Yep. Dude, I'm, this is groovy, son. Absolutely. Hell yeah. Bro, I appreciate it, brother. <laughs> dude, I like this. Hell yeah. Well, I'm going to wear this one, dude. Got bananas on it? This... Dude, bananas, pineapple. <laughs> Hell yeah. Dude, um, when I go on the boat, I'm going to rock this. Yes. Sir. And it's a medium. Oh, bro, this will fit. Perfectly. Yes. Bro, appreciate it. Yeah. Bro, shout out to the Open Mod po- Open Map Podcast. <laughs> Let me just say that. Greatest podcast out there right now. <laughs> if nobody's asked you, what was your influence to start this podcast? Um I've, I've always had, had an affinity for public speaking. speaking. Mm-hmm. Um I'm really, really good, good at talking. talking. You've always had an affinity for public speaking. Like I, I was in Were you in like debate and stuff in high school? In, when I was in high school, school I was in theater and weightlifting at the same time. time. Wow. How weird. That's two sides of a different coin, right? That's a completely different coin. That's night and day. Yeah, we went to districts for weightlifting, and I went to districts two years for theater. Were you – so you were acting. Yes. You were doing, like, roles in, like – I was Romeo three years in a row. Wow. (laughs) For Valentine's Day, three years in a row. Were you always good under pressure? Yes. Yeah. Ever since a kid, or, like, was that – were you put into like pressure situations? Is that mm, no? I just I I've, I've always been good with people. Okay. And I'm good around people, and I'm good at presenting myself and yeah. acting. Um, and I think what's really interesting, and the reason I the biggest reason I started the podcast is because I want everybody from like biggest to smallest to have a chance to shine in the spotlight because I feel like there's a lot of fighters. Yeah who work so goddamn hard all the way through to, like, brown belt. Yeah. And then they, like, go compete at ADCC, 
and it's their first time getting notice, and then they go like four and two, and they win four and lose two, mm-hmm. that's it. And then they're like, okay. That's it for them? Well, I'm just, it's, it's like, like, it seems like a lot of the times we do this big thing where like, okay, you're on the main stage, you're like the cool, mm-hmm. you know, the cool guy thing to do. And then you do decent, right? And it's not like you're not the best in the world. But I don't think that's what really matters. And I don't think that's what we should be focusing on in jiu-jitsu. I think we should be focusing on the sport as a whole and how we, how we can improve it. Yeah. And I think my way of doing that would be through getting those guys who haven't had a, check, a second chance in the spotlight at the higher level mm-hmm. or getting those guys who haven't been seen yet who are at the lower level and giving them a chance to shine. Yeah. And just like learning people's life stories too. For sure. Pretty cool. Dude, I think jiu-jitsu has a very, very bright future ahead of it. It's crazy how big it's gotten over the last couple of years. Yes. And it's just keep it, it's going to keep growing, hopefully. So hopefully by the time we're at ADCC competing, it's like a $50,000 <laughs> grand prize. And we get Eddie Bravo in the seminar. I'm still trying to win. I'm going to compete in high rollers. Whenever high rollers comes up, we're winning high rollers. I've tell, I told Coach already, we're going to win high rollers. We're mounting that belt in the dojo. And we're Hell smoking yeah. that pound away <laughs> in that – well, probably not in the dojo because I don't know the smoking laws, but we're smoking that pound away, the whole dojo. Hell Rolling yeah. Rolling 10-gram cones. I, I don't care. Whatever we got to do, you know? Yeah. That'll be great. Do you have any, uh, any final shout-outs, anything you'd like to say? Mm. Watch the Open Mat, Open Mat Podcast. It's the greatest podcast where do we where are we stream at? YouTube. Just YouTube? Just YouTube for now. Greatest podcast on YouTube. Open Mat Podcast. <laughs> Groovy guy right here. Kaya. Thank you all. Have a great day. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace. Peace.